I'd like to introduce Kisa Krusko. She is a New Hampshire based family law attorney and she is joining us live tonight. I uh, appreciate you talking to us about this case. I want to start with um, what we're hearing from child services, which is very little. Um, and based on this statement, it seems like lip service. Are you surprised the department has not been more forthcoming about its checks and balances, at least coming out and saying, yes, we have record of what had happened to Harmony? Well, in New Hampshire, the records in DCYF are highly confidential. So under the statute and the law as it currently stands, they're not really allowed to release much. So it's not very surprising that they haven't really commented in specifics on the case. And we do want to give them and also investigators the benefit of the doubt. They're working together to try to locate Harmony. I think the big question I keep hearing a lot of people ask, I have this as well, is why did Harmony's father have custody if in fact in 2019 uh, there was this evidence of abuse against his daughter? It's, it's hard to say without seeing the actual records, but it seems like in this case, um, Harmony was taken from her mother in Massachusetts through a child protection case and then given to her father for custody um, in New Hampshire. So that's that's different than than in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, there would be something called a Bill F hearing where DCYF and the court and the guardian ad litem, ACASA, would investigate whether the parent who did not have custody was fit to take custody. So. Um, it's hard to say without seeing what the court actually had in front of them. You heard Brian mention a moment ago, many wonder, was a ball dropped here, but is this a unique case? I mean, are there kids who are falling through the system, particularly in the last two years with the pandemic, potentially less checks of homes uh, that we see happening? Well, I think definitely kids who are not in school are most vulnerable. Um, there wasn't a school or a pediatrician or a um, person who seemed to have a connection with this child outside of the parents. And so when she went missing, um, there wasn't that third party who could call in a report and say, where's Harmony? Mm -hmm. What about the rights of the parents in a case like this? Mom was saying, I reached out, I was concerned. She was only seeing Harmony over FaceTime. She didn't see her often. Um, what rights does the mom have, even though she didn't have legal custody? Uh, even if she doesn't have legal custody, if she still has her parental rights, she has the right to go to court, to ask to see her child, to have visitation, to have phone calls. And if that's not happening, then um, she can ask the court to enforce that. So um, here there was a gap of time where she had last seen her child. And then when she was going to court, um, or not to court, but to DCYF and to the police to make those reports. So although it is confidential, do you suspect that there is a record of people raising concerns about Harmony's well-being, any welfare checks that would have happened? There would be record of that. At some point, um, there will be evidence of a timeline to understand more on when she may have gone missing? I'm sure DCYF and the police have a more specific timeline of any reports that were made um, on, on when she was missing. Uh, they're required to keep reports that are screened in, meaning there is reason to suspect that there was abuse or neglect um, for a certain amount of time. So there are definitely records. We just don't have access to them as the general public. I know as part of your legal practice, um, approaching these case cases with compassion is one of your priorities. In a case like this, what stands out to you about what may have been missed? And, and could anything have been done to prevent this? Uh, from a legal <laughs> court perspective, maybe not, but um, in the sense of a child having um, loved ones, third parties, teachers, doctors, uh, other people who can um, keep eyes on them, it just stands out as being the most important. And having follow through from Child Protective Services, if Massachusetts placed her in New Hampshire, what was the follow through to make sure that she was doing well once she was placed there? So many questions. It may be some time before we have answers, but we appreciate your insight tonight. Kaisa Krusko, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.